Yo, what's good, everyone? Welcome back to the NFL episode of Winning Picks Weekly. As always, my name is John Malika, co-host of Knicks Jets, etc. Pod. You can catch me there with Alex, the Tratacaster 101, co-host of Knicks Fan TV. But here, as always, my buddy, my co-host, my pal, I'm joined my boy, Greg Albert, video producer of Knicks Jets, etc. And also co-host of the Jets episodes. What up, Greg? What's up, John? I had a bad week last week, so I'm looking forward to bounce back. Let's get into the games because it's like, you know, bad teams. Just don't even look at the tape. Bury the tape. Just focus on the next week. That's what I'm doing. I'm not even looking at last week. It wasn't good. Four and ten. Got to bounce back. So, All right. All right. I had a decent it. week. I'm, I'm even Steven, 7-7, seven, 2-1 seven, on the best bets. Uh, and, I, and I'm ready to roll here, man. We, we, we learned a lot of stuff. We're going to get into it. Let's start off here. Thursday night, Tennessee Titans at the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers are back, Greg. Tell me they're back. No. Minus three and a half at home. What do you like? Dude, I love Tennessee. I love Tennessee. Tell me why. Plus points. It's getting cold out. Derrick Henry start gonna run the ball. You know, I think Tennessee looked pretty good against Denver last week. They have a pretty Denver is a pretty good pass defense. They were still able to throw it when they needed to. I think uh um Tannehill had a pretty good game. Green Bay, I thought was good. I think that was a big time motivational game playing against Mike McCarthy. I think Aaron Rodgers was like, I can't we can't lose to this guy. And Christian Watson had three big-time touchdowns. So, you know, if someone guards him, Tennessee, I think, has a pretty good defense. Um, I think it's going to be low-scoring. That's how most of the primetime games have been. And, you know, I think these teams, I think Tennessee's a little bit better than Green Bay, so I like getting three-and-a-half points in this. All right, yeah, I mean, I agree with you that it's Tractor Cito season, so I'm with you there, and I can see why Tennessee's enticing, 6-3, and three, trying to get a hold of this division. Mike Vrabel, good coach. Green Bay's look bad. Maybe last week was fluky. But this is a great spot for Green Bay. Short week, Thursday night. I'm surprised they didn't bring up their jerseys. They got a whiteout going on in Green Bay, the color True. rush, all white. Aaron Rodgers needs this game. He doesn't lose in Lambeau. Unless it's to the Jets, right? Everyone forgets. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, he lost to the Jets. Everyone's like, oh, it's over now. What's going on? He lost to, he lost to Washington. We're like, okay, that's it. It's done with. He's back in Green Bay. It's a short week. Tennessee's hurt. Uh, Caleb Farley's out. So you ask me who's going to guard Christian Watson? I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. Uh, so th- that's a problem. The Green Bay could match the running. The three and a half, they're begging me to take Tennessee. They're begging me. Please take Tennessee. They're, they could run the ball. Uh, three and a half. They look good. Traylon Burks is, is back second week. Green Bay stinks. Dude, I love, love, love Green Bay in this spot. Anything else to add here? Man, 81% of the money on Green Bay. That scares me a little bit in a primetime game, but that's it should why be. I'm going Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. Okay, it should be. I love Green Bay here. Yeah. Going to the one o'clock slate, Greg. A, a, a good one, a, a doozy. But well, we're gonna start off here. Honestly, I gotta tell you, man. I'm be honest with you today. I, I put on a game. I, I have NFL Plus, like you know. I put on a game. I put on an old game. I put on the Jets in New England the last time we beat them. I had to watch it, man. And in that game, I'm not gonna get too ahead of myself, but Mark Sanchez threw a career high, three touchdowns. And I. I I, I'm just saying it, it's doable. I, I watch yeah. a lot of those plays. Jericho Cotchery getting under those linebackers. There's a lot, a lot you know, a lot of similar stuff. San Antonio Holmes you know, back catch. Listen, man, the New York Jets they lost against the New England Patriots, and it's no longer that with this new team, first and second year players, veterans, free agents. It's no longer. Hey, we know we heard about the big bad Patriots. We heard about Belichick. We know the fans are upset, but this is another game for us, a division game. You know, we're, we're ready. They felt the refs last week. They were embarrassed from Zach Wilson, and they bounced back, obviously, as a team against Buffalo. They had the bye week. And you're going to tell me they're not hungry against Bill Belichick in New England right now to get the number one spot in the division after they all... I watched almost every single interview, Greg. They watched... Every single person watched the Bills-Minnesota game. Garrett oh, yeah. Wilson, Connor McGovern, everybody. Everybody you had, they all watched the game, man. Michael Carter. Dude. We we need this game. The three and a half is the most disrespectful hook I've ever seen in my life. It went down <laughs> from four and a half to three and a half. That's the most disrespectful hook I've ever seen in my life. I love the New York Jets. I don't care that it's my background. I, it's my favorite bet of the week. It's my top bet. I, I don't care what anybody says. New York Jets, three and a half, money line. 
The under is too much. I usually love the under, but the 38 and a half is a little, a li it's a little too short. <laughs> it's going to be like 42 or something. So I don't love that. I love the Jets three and a half. I, it, it's my favorite game. I'm with you too. It's the best bet for me as well. I like if the Jets are the real deal, which I think they are at this point, they win this game outright, getting three and a half points. I love it. This is a big game for Zach Wilson. This is Zach Wilson who like kind of I think I don't know what to say, like defines his career, but sets him in the right path. If he can get a win against Buffalo, we're road warriors. We've been doing great on the road. You know, I really do feel like we lost against the refs. I know that's loser talk when we played New England a couple weeks ago. So if the refs are somewhat fair in this game, because we know they're not going to be, I think the Jets get it done. Three and a half points, I love it. Give me the Jets. This is my first best bet of the day. Let's go. Double best bet. Listen, man, 13, 13 straight losses for the New York Jets. We have some demons to exercise. Zach Wilson, seven interceptions against Bill Belichick in two games. Never played in New England. I'm ah man, I, is it, the Jets if they win their first place in the division, if they lose their last place in the division, it's the craziest game of the week. I cannot wait for it. Now let's stick with the division. We mentioned them one o'clock game, a we another weather game. Like the Green Bay is a weather game. This is a bigger weather game, and it's supposed to be one to two feet of snow starting from Thursday to Sunday out in Buffalo. Got <laughs> wild times. I know you're upstate right now. Uh, Greg, around the Albany area. Yeah, we got we a couple inches snow. of snow tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys are you guys always like to start us off, but Buffalo getting two feet. This eight and a half is insane to me. To uh, I'll be honest with you, all day today I've been banging the the under. It was at forty three and a half last time I checked. I was I've been banging the under all day long, and I've been betting Cleveland plus eight and a half. Buffalo, listen, they haven't been the same without Poyer. They haven't been the same with that. Milano came back, but they're still not great against the run, dude. Josh Allen, I'm sorry to say, Greg, I know you love Josh Allen. I know you're, you're the number one guy. He's looked like Josh Allen. He's, yeah. he's, doing, he's doing the interceptions that we all know him to throw. Uh, and he's, he's being kind of wild. And honestly, he's getting injured because he's, he's moving around a lot. I, I don't know. That was scary last game where he threw an interception and then he went to – to t try to tackle. Yeah, I thought that was gonna, I honestly thought that was the end of the season. So personally, because it's a weather game, because Buffalo's bad against the run lately, Cleveland, all they do is run. I love Cleveland plus eight and a half. I am tempted. Ooh, oof, Greg. I am so tempted right now. Should I just do it? Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna make this my bet my second best bet of the day. Starting off hot here in the one o'clock. Two best bets. Cleveland eight and a half is mad disrespectful, dude. Matt, I know they're three and six and Buffalo six and three. Eight and a half is disrespectful. I think Cleveland could straight up win this game. What do you think, man? I don't think so. I think, I mean, I just think Cleveland was such a mess last week against Miami. I don't think that Miami is this unbelievable, like, top three team in the AFC. I think they have a really good passing attack, and Cleveland just could ab do absolutely nothing to slow them down. And it wasn't the, you know, it wasn't, uh, Tyree Kill and Waddle absolutely killing him. It was Jeff Wilson Jr. It was all a bunch of other guys too. The three, four, and five guys that were killing Cleveland. So if the three, four, and five guys are killing you, you know Waddle and Hill could kill you. So I just think Cleveland's bad. I think he's a big time bounce back spot for Buffalo. I think last week I agree. Like Cook looked pretty good. He ran for like 120 yards and in over, including the overtime. But dude. Kirk Cousins was dicing them up. Justin Jefferson was making unreal catches. Maybe probably going to be the best catch of the season in that game. Uh, the reception he had late when they were kind of making a comeback. Again, Buffalo, I think I think the thing was was that they were up 27. They allowed 13 points in the fourth quarter to Minnesota, including one of the most ridiculous touchdowns you'll ever see in football. Uh, giving a fumbling on the one-inch line <laughs> and letting Minnesota recover it. So... I think it's a huge bounce back spot for Buffalo. I don't think Cleveland's that good. I know there's going to be snow, but I don't think the snow changes too much. Buffalo's used to it. Cleveland's used to it. Both cold weather teams. So give me Buffalo minus eight and a half as my second best bet of the day. We're back to back best bets. We're head to head on this one. Oh wow! I didn't even so. notice that you had that. Yeah, I, I I have to make it. I have to make it. It's it, it's a this line makes maybe you know what maybe. Only, it won't be my best bet. It's my officially my what am I missing bet of the week. It's my what am I missing bet. Okay. I, have, I, I don't understand. I, 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 bad. Yeah, yeah, but dude, Buffalo, 
lost to the New York Jets and lost to the Vikings in pretty bad fashion. The quarterback looked pretty bad, and they can't stop the run. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I know think I think both games were pretty close. I mean, they lost both games by a field goal, and the Jets and the Minnesota Vikings are two of the best teams in, in the league, two top 10 teams for sure. Cleveland's definitely not a top 10 team. Eight and a half points is a lot. That, that's what, you know. Yeah. What am I missing for sure? It could be a hold your nose pick because of so many points, but oh, uh, I have I have a way better hold my okay. nose. All right, let's get to it I have, then. A way better hold my nose coming. Let's let's jump to let's jump to this Chicago versus Atlanta game. This is an interesting one. Two teams who refuse to throw the ball. Yep. <laughs> Atlanta at home minus three and a half here. What do you got? I like Atlanta in this one. I think that eighty percent of the money right now is on Chicago. I think these teams are, are very close. I don't know why 80% of the money is coming on on the Bears. Like, you know, uh, Fields has been incredible. I mean, we are Fields has been incredible. We know that he's been able to run the ball a ton, like you're saying, not throw it. Same thing with Atlanta. I mean, that Thursday night game, they've had a little bit more extra time to prepare. I think they got embarrassed in Carolina. I mean, they just look so bad and so sloppy. I like Arthur Smith as the coach there. I like the team. I think Cordell Patterson just didn't play well or didn't play that much. I don't know if he was banged up or what when they played. Well, he's still coming back. He's still coming back from injury. Yeah, so it was a short week for him. So maybe he just wasn't fully healthy. But now he got a little extra rest going into this game because they played on Thursday. I like I like Atlanta to bounce back in a major way. Three and a half points. That scares me the hook. But still, I'll take Atlanta in this one. I I think they're much better at home. They're one of those teams that I think are just better at home than they are on the road. They were on the road last week in Carolina. All right. Uh, listen, the, the, these teams both run. I could see why Chicago three and a half is enticing. Everybody's falling in love with Justin Fields, but dude, you don't win games. Like, yeah. Lost I, I don't lines. It's a cra- this is the craziest trend, man. It's I don't know if it's just like being a, a New Yorker and everything is just, you know, a little expanded here whenever, especially about sports teams. But I cannot imagine anyone talking positively about my quarterback when we're losing every game. Actually, in fact, it's the opposite. Zach Wilson's five and one since yeah. he's been back this year, and it's oh my goodness, we need to cut him and put in start Joe Mike Flacco. White. <laughs> yeah, put in Joe Flacco. I mean, it's crazy, dude. I don't get it at all. There's this crazy. You're telling me now, you know, they're tanking. They're active. They they traded two of their best defensive players. Yeah. They can't win a game. They can't win a game. They don't throw the ball. And now 80% of the money's on them versus Atlanta, who are fighting for a division. Dude, this makes absolutely no sense to me. I, I I love the Falcons here. Give me the Atlanta Falcons all day long. Is there is there a game in the 1 o'clock that entices you here? Yeah, big time. Philly versus Indy. Indy getting the big one with Jeff Saturday. You call that from a mile away. I'm an idiot. I took the Raiders. I won't be doing that again. Um, See about that. Philadelphia, I can't <laughs> believe you. True, right? <laughs> You're um, stuck between a rock and a hard bad, place. I'm in a bad yeah, spot. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about, about that at the four o'clock window. <laughs> you know, we have to cut that part because I'm in a bad <laughs> spot. The four o'clock window. Um, Philadelphia, though, on the other hand, also in a bad spot, losing to Washington. I couldn't believe that on Monday night. So minus six and a half on the road against Indy. Can Indy do it again? Can Jeff Saturday get these guys going? Jonathan Taylor's back, and he's run the ball really well. I just think Philadelphia is just head and shoulders better than most teams in the NFL. Again, I'm a big bounce-back kind of guy. I think they bounce back. Minus 6.5 scares me a little bit because I feel like they're trying to beat you into taking Philadelphia. I just I just don't know what I got with Indy. You got Matt Ryan running the ball all over the place. Yo, that was sick. Yeah, it's just weird stuff from Indy, so... I feel like I know what I'm getting from Philadelphia, even though they, they kind of didn't really show up on Monday night. Short week, bounce back week for Philadelphia. I like Philadelphia, minus six and a half. All right. I mean, speaking of things I called from a mile away, not only did I call Indianapolis with Jeff Saturday, but I called Washington winning this game, beating Philly yeah. from a mile away. I had them straight up winning. And, dude, this is because it, I'm telling you, as much as people like to hate on Minnesota for being frauds, it's so amazing to me that nobody is doing that with Philly. Philadelphia is fraudulent, man. Not only did they get exposed last week, but Goddard got hurt. Uh, yeah. AJ Brown was like limping all over the place. That he's back, but he's fully healthy. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I, we, remember we went on the schedule last week. I pull up the receipts. 
we're gonna end up looking at this schedule like dude i can't remember when philadelphia was eight and oh and then they ended up you know losing to watch it losing to the giants a couple times all of a sudden they're a wild card team and yeah. i'm hosting a playoff game I, I i really think that that's where it's gonna go i'm not gonna say they're gonna lose to indy i you know how i feel about shaq leonard shaq darius leonard being out and it looks like he's out for for the rest of the season yeah. but the jeff saturday thing is, is, is new quitty pay being hurt last game did scare me it also scares me that the line dropped from ten. It was ten. The look ahead was ten for this game. I have it at ten in my in my in my uh, in my book. Yeah. I don't love that because people, you know, are hyped about that six and a half. Man, where's the public? That's what I was just looking up because I figure you're gonna ask me right <laughs> now. Um, seventy-seven percent of the money on the Eagles. Are on the Colts plus six and a half at home. No way. As I'm saying, I think this Jeff Saturday stuff. It's cool. It's a good story. Okay, I'm off. I'm off. Seventy-seven okay, that's fine. percent of the money. Okay, I'm with you. Let's go Philly. Let's go Philly. But yo, dude, I'm telling. Historically, in general, the Eagles don't look good without Goddard or a tight end. In general, yeah. They Whenever the tight end, end is missing, they just they stink. I'm I'm worried about it. I don't love this pick at all. I'm, I also think Philadelphia is one of those things where I didn't watch the full game on Monday night, but looking back at the box score of it, it's just like, remember, I talked about it last year, and I feel like I talk about it again this year with Philadelphia. It's just like, they forget to just run the ball. Miles Sanders, 50 yards. You know, it's just like, what are you doing? Like, you guys... I they get, had a couple of very bad drives at the end where they literally took off like eight seconds and because the, they didn't run the ball once. So you're totally right about that. Yeah, and it's just like, you know, they, they get up 14-7 in the first quarter and they just forget to run the football. It's like, dude, just run the ball. You have one of the best offensive lines. You have three or four good running backs. You have Jalen Hurts, who's a great running back or quarter running quarterback. Just run the freaking football, and they just forget sometimes. So, um, you this know, is an interesting game. they're prone to that. I, I I can see that people are hyped about Jeff Saturday, which makes me off off of it. Yeah. All right. I'll I'll take Philly. I'll take Philly. Six and a half. I'm with you there. All right. Let's talk about the New York Giants. Man. Talk about an easy schedule off a of bye, dude. Last week, Houston team that can't team that can't defend the run. All the Giants do is run. They kill Houston. I love that game. Giants at home now against Detroit, who literally cannot stop a nosebleed. Shout out to Bart Scott. Yep. They literally stink against everything. They can't stop anything. I don't trust the Detroit Lions as far as I can throw them. I love the Giants to go 8-2. and two. And, dude, I'm telling you right now, go to your sportsbook app. Take the Giants and the Jets to win the division. Just do it, man. Just do it. Win yourself a couple thousand dollars. I'm telling you. Take the Giants right now. They're gonna win this game, and dude, they're gonna they're gonna at least split with Philly. It's gonna be wild down here in the NFC East. If the, if, if the Jets beat uh, the Patriots, it's gonna be wild in the AFC East. Right now, all eight teams in the AFC and NFC East are in the playoffs, except for the Washington football team, which are a half game back. It's crazy. I mean, it's wild. I love the Giants in this spot. I'm sure that everybody else does too. I'm, even, I'm scared of the public. What do you like here? Yeah, I like the Giants too. Um, in this one, minus three and a half again worries me a little bit. Public though, uh, they're on the Lions. Seventy percent of the money's on the Lions. Oh, you know, man. I, I just don't believe in the Lions, especially on the road. I feel like the Jet, the Giants at home. I think it's gonna be low scoring. Um, I think the Giants come to play. I have them actually as my third and final best bet. I have oh, an all man. New York best bet week ahead of me. I like the Giants minus three and a half at home against the Lions. Lions get that win against the, uh, Chicago last week. They're banged up too. They, you know, St. Brown's kind of limping here and there. Reynolds is out. They traded their tight end. You know, I think they're devoid of talent at multiple areas, both on offense and defense. And the Giants, I think, are really playing for something. The Giants have a serious wide receiver problem. Everyone knows it at this point. But besides that, our boy was a cager. Had a, a touchdown the other day, I think. I'm, also, I'm playing. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. On me. No, you're right. I love Lawrence Cager. Yeah. He's killing it ever since Bellinger broke his eye. Yep. Lawrence Cager's been killing it. And he'll be in Bellinger, too. He'll be back in a couple weeks as well. So I like the Giants here, minus three and a half at home. Like I said, I think it's going to be low scoring. But 
Um, yeah, give me the Giants. It's my third and final best bet of the day. And honestly, I love that best bet. I was, I, I, I was. You know what? No, no, no. I, 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 I was tempted, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stay away. I'm gonna stay away. All right. Let's jump to this Rams New Orleans game. Maybe the worst game of the entire week. Which honestly, if you would if you would have asked me before the season, I would say this could be flexed up of how amazing yeah. this game is. Right? This is the Los Angeles Rams. Who knows who's gonna be quarterback, whether it's Walford who tries to kill wide receivers, or whether it's Stafford who's always hurt, especially this year. Plus three and a half. He looks so unmotivated. At New Orleans. New Orleans minus three and a half at home, dude. New Orleans stinks. <laughs> I I I I keep trying to fall in love with them every single game. I promise you. Every time I watch, I'm like, yo, the Saints got this. Say they stink. But they're not worse than the Los Angeles Rams. The Los Angeles Rams have no motivation. They stink without Cooper Cup. They have no offensive line. They have no running game. I love New Orleans Saints. I don't care who the quarterback is. Taysom Hill. It can be it can be Kamara. Maybe Winston will get in there. I, I love I love New Orleans here. I do too. I mean, both these teams absolutely sink. This is actually my one of my missing pick of the week because I just don't get how the Rams aren't more of a favorite. I don't understand why. Like you the said, Rams? the Rams, right? the Rams. They have Webb Walford. That's what I'm saying. I don't the get underdog. how. I'm sorry, more of an underdog. Like I don't get how they oh. have more points. Like why is it only oh. three and a half? I sure. think it should be at least seven, maybe six or something like that. Well, how can how can how can New Orleans lay six to anyone? Uh, a team that's all backups. They have no running back. They have no offensive line. You just said it. Cooper Cup is out now. They yeah. have no quarterback. It's their backup quarterback. I mean, you know, it's just it's just crazy to me that it's only three and a half points. Like the, to me, that makes no sense. So I'm going with the New Orleans as well. Maybe Vegas knows something and they're tricking us, but. I just think New Orleans, they have to get it going a little bit. They're way more healthy, even though they do have some injuries on both offense and defense. I think it's Kamara. I think it's uh, Olave. Like you said, I don't really care who's quarterbacking for them. They have to win this game by more than three points. All right. Let's move on to... I, I, think, I think this is going to be a best bet of mine here. Ooh. And this is a disgusting game. Really ugly. Really gross. Don't even want to watch it. Kind of just like better than don't even look. And that's a Washington football team. Minus three and a half at Houston. Dude, what do we know about Houston? They, they can't stink. stop the run. They yeah. can't stop the run. And what does Washington do? They run. I mean, it's easy. <laughs> Anything that runs against Washington, against uh, Houston, you have to take it. And all Washington wants to do is hold the ball, run it, control the clock. And Chase Young is coming back next week. Yep. The, honestly, the most, the most, un, the most forgotten player I think in the NFL. He is a he's a wrecking ball. He's an absolute beast. I think they're gonna kill Houston. Washington wants to get into the playoffs. They want to get that wild card spot right now. It looks. They've been playing decent ball. Dude, you know Tyler I mean? Heineke's good. Yeah, he's fine. You were yeah. telling me he was bad a couple weeks ago. He's fine. Yeah. Heineke, Heineke's fine. I mean, hey, you know who he's better than? I can promise you. Mills. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's all like he Carson needs to do this Wentz. week. Oh, also better than Carson Wentz. Yeah. Better than both those guys. He's the best, he's the best quarterback on both teams. <laughs> and his name is <laughs> Heineke. Uh, so I, I love Washington here. That's going to be my, uh, my second best bet of the day. Yeah, I like Washington too. Here, not too much more to add. I think their I think their defense is better. I think their offense is better. I mean, they just have weapons, man. If Heineke just keeps keep slinging it, they got guys that can catch the ball. Houston, I think, is just avoided the talent on both sides of the football. They did not look good against the Giants last week. I think they looked pretty good two weeks ago against Philadelphia. I think that was a big game, prime time game. You had the World Series going on between Houston and Philly. They got up for that one. They had definitely had a letdown game against the Giants last week. I think they just keep letting down. They're one seven and one. They're going for the first overall pick this year in the rebuild season. All right, last one o'clock game of the of the week for me. I'm gonna be on the West Coast, so it's gonna be a ten o'clock game. Last Ooh. ten o'clock game for me. It's kind of like that. It's great, Greg. I got a wedding at two p.m. and everything's gonna be done. The whole, That's kind of nice. 
<laughs> before. It's awesome. Anyway, speaking of nice, I think this might be one of the easiest games of the week. I don't have the cojones to make it my best bet, but dude, this might be one of the easiest games of the week. And that's the Carolina Panthers, three and seven, plus 12 and a half, largest spread of the week at the Baltimore Ravens. What do you got, Greg? I don't know what I got, John, and this is why I'm happy we do this show because I want to talk it out. 77% of the money is on Carolina. 12.5 points is a ridiculous amount of points, even though you're a road team. Baker Mayfield is back and starting for Carolina, and that worries me. I don't like Baker Mayfield. I don't want to bet on Baker Mayfield. But I really do think this is my hold my nose pick of the week. 12 points is a lot of points. You can get a backdoor cover here. 12 and a half. You can get a backdoor cover here. Baltimore coming off a bye. I think they're going to be good. They're making a play for the division. They're 6-3. and three. I like what I've seen from Carolina the last few weeks. Again, they play on Thursday night last week, so they get a little bit more time to rest up and prepare. I think, you know, since they fired their coach, it's been going good. I just don't like that Baker Mayfield is back in the mix. He's headbutting guys without his helmet on. I think that was just a super cringy video. I think he's just kind of become cringy. Sam Darnold's his backup. It's just a weird situation they have going on. So, I mean, if the guys play for him and they play strong, they've looked pretty frisky the last two weeks. So, 12.5 points, hold your nose and take it. I mean, you're talking about practically two touchdowns. It's crazy. Dude, so listen to this. You said that you think Baltimore is going to be good off a of bye. Uh, Lamar was drafted in 2018. Yeah. So you want to do since 2018 or since 2019? What's that? Let's do 2018. Since 2018, after a bye, Baltimore, one and four, 20% after a bye against the spread. Ready for something else? I'm ready. At home as double-digit favorites, or no, just, just as favorites in general. Okay. Since 2018, 44%. I don't have the double digits, but I assume that that's going to be cut even more. Right. So I couldn't find I couldn't find the specific stats for that. To be honest with you, with our our limited resources here. Yeah, you don't have a subscription to Elias. What are you doing over there? Yeah. So, so but but I I, I hate Baltimore, off of after a buy against okay. a spread. I hate Baltimore as a huge favorite, especially double digits. I hate Baltimore against a team that runs the ball. Listen, you cover the spread by by controlling the clock. And what are you scared of on on the Ravens? Like they they have a couple of broken running backs coming back to go with Kenyon Drake, the Gus Bus, you know, and um, the other guy, so J.K. JK Dobbins, Dobbins both come, eventually, yeah, yeah. Like everyone's injured, all the wide receivers injured. Mark Andrews is still injured. Hey, like, my, my my concern is the defense. I'm scared. I'm worried if Carolina can only score like six points off two field goals. Listen, man, they've been getting some good sacks. Yeah. Carolina's been pretty decent on defense, man. No, hey. they've, they've been playing for, was it Steve Wilkes as their interim coach? They've been they're playing, playing for him. And I think they're going to play for Baker because he just head-buttered all of them. I think I, I think as cringy as it was, I think they they got to be at least somewhat hyped yep. about that. So uh, it's, it's your hold-your-nose pick. I love it. I love Carolina here. I agree with you. And all the stats go with you. So jumping to the 4 p.m. slate. This is where, Greg, you're stuck in between a rock and a hard place here. When I saw this game on the slate, I mean, obviously it was coming, their division. But I was so excited to hear your thoughts on it, especially after I told you how bad McDaniel is. And we all know how bad Hackett is. I mean, this is just the game of the century. Right? Your boy, Derek Carr, who you call a top QB, this and that, crying. Top 10. Cry- yeah, top 10, no, top bottom 10 this year, crying after losing a football game. Then you got Russell Wilson, the other side of the cringy, who's super positive and telling us he's, he's, everything's amazing and he's the greatest after losing every single game. I mean, just the the two – talk about cringy quarterbacks. Talk about bad coaches. I mean, this is, this is the battle of the century right here. I hate this game. Denver two and a half at home. Just give it to me. I don't care. It's stupid. They're going to run the ball. I hate it. Just give me Denver, but dude, I hate this game so much. What do you think? Yeah, I'm with you. I think both these both these teams are very bad. I think both these teams are very even. So that's why I'm taking Vegas plus two and a half. I just can't take I can't take Denver. They just every time there's just there's just flashes of good plays. 
Like they scored that big time touchdown against Tennessee last week, and I get very nervous as a Tennessee better who had a good amount of money on Tennessee. And then they just can't do anything the rest of the game. And just Tennessee's allowed to climb back, get in the game. I think, you know, I don't know what to think about Derek Carr and this Las Vegas Raiders team. <laughs> um, but well, They're good running the ball, but I just don't think they can. Listen, Denver defense is very good. They're very stingy. They're not yeah. going to have Vegas score or anything. So, uh, and Denver's just going to run. That's why I, I, I feel like Big Manimus at home, a bunch of field goals. Call yeah. I, like I said, I think both these, I can't take Denver in either way. I think both these teams are very close. So just give me the points plus two and a half. Even though it's not a ton of points, still, I'll take two and a half if I can get it. All right. So this is right here, Greg, what I like to call the rat game of the week. Line makes literally no sense to anybody, but it, everybody has identified. That it makes no sense to anybody, which is a double rat line for me. I'm I am stuck in my own gambling brain here. Everyone says, "Oh, Minnesota should be favored in this game." What's going on? They're at home. They're eight and one. They just beat Buffalo. Dallas looked terrible last week, but everybody's on this, so everybody's gonna take Dallas. I'm sticking with Minnesota here at home. I'm buying what Minnesota's putting down, dude. I don't think last week was lucky. Yes, it was turnovers. Yes, it was a crazy catch. But, dude, they're just good. They just win games. You know yeah, what I mean? Kirk they have a really good legit. defense. Yeah, he's legit, dude. He, he's, you know, you you were really right about Russell Wilson being bad for the last couple of years, but you're also really right about Kirk Cousins being good. Uh, he, he's he's been really good as long as it's not at prime time, man. It's really crazy that that's a real stat. It's like, it's, it's really legit. But, dude, he's really good. It's at home to come. Dude, you don't think Minnesota's going to be rocking? They're going to be going nuts, dude. Minnesota's 8-1, and, and Dallas is coming to town. This is going to be a huge game for them. I I, I think they're going to get up, and they're going to win this game. Yeah, to me, this is this was my honorary one of my missing pick of the week because I just don't get how Minnesota's plus at one and a half points. But when the lines don't make sense, I feel like you just have to take... Dallas? Yeah, Dallas, because it's just like... It, but there's every- no reason why they're a favorite, even though it's only one and a half points. It's very small. But Dallas just last week, I mean, like I said, could not cover Christian Watson. And then who's coming to town? Oh, Justin Jefferson, possibly the best wide receiver in all of football. I mean, this is just, this has Minnesota this, blowing them out. Yeah, I'm listen ready. Listen to this. I know what you're going to say, but listen to this. Dallas, 71% of the money. Yeah. 40% of the bets. Yeah. So big time better coming in on Dallas. Yeah, I think Dallas. Is, I, I think Dallas gets it right here. I think they bounce back. I'm a big guy, as I can say. You know, going through this, I'm a big bounce back guy. I have Buffalo bouncing back. I have Philadelphia bouncing back. I like Dallas here in this one. I think they run the ball. I think their defense fixes itself because I think their defense is really good. I think last week was just kind of an aberration for them, and I think Minnesota just has a letdown. How do you not let down after the most? improbable win during the regular season I've seen in five years, ten years. I can't remember the last time something as crazy happened. And more, te- more probable than the Jets-Browns? I don't know, I guess. But even then, it's like, dude, they fumbled the ball on the one, on the one-inch <laughs> yeah, line, and you recovered it. Like, it's just crazy. The Jets one was insane. That's true, and it's... Maybe it's maybe it's you know recency bias or whatever. Maybe it's because I had a lot of money on Minnesota money line at plus. And because we needed as Jets fans, we, we needed Buffalo it. to lose. And I was watching that game and I was screaming about the refs in that refs, game. I don't yeah. want to get too much into it, but dude, that Gabe Davis catch that was Unreal. unbelievably not a catch. How you do not challenge that? It's well, you crazy. can't challenge. That's why, Greg. That's why you can't. You can't yeah, challenge. Yeah, but even dude, if I'm if I'm Kevin O'Connell, I'm running on the field and getting every penalty until the booth reviews it. Like I'm throwing the red flag. They I know won't. it's a penalty. I don't care. I'm I'm not letting the game go on until you review it. I'm standing on the field. I'm taking the ball and running. I'm not allowing you to go through because that was so clearly not a catch. And it's on your sideline. Like you saw it happen. Everyone saw it happen. Either way, there's a million other things too. I don't know if you saw. I don't know if I sent it in the group chat. Twelve men on the field. On the stop on first down against uh, a Minnesota uh, uh, Buffalo hat. So again, you're, you're missing 12 men on the field calls. You're missing catches. They were trying to do everything they could to get Buffalo the win, and they still couldn't do it. I think Minnesota lets down here. I like Dallas in a bounce back. The line makes no sense, so just go with the nonsense. Dallas minus one and a half. 
Can I just make a quick mention about refs here, a little tangent? I, sure. I, I'm going Minnesota, but a little tangent about the refs. You know, Pat Beverly was uh, on his podcast today with uh, Roan, and uh, he had uh, uh, the Portnoy on, the president. It was a really great pod. You should really go listen to it. Yeah. Talking about the refs, though, Pat Beverly, they were like uh, – uh, Dave kind of asked about Tim Donahue or whatever, and uh, Beverly goes, listen, man, I'm not going to say the name, I'm not going to say what, but, like, this year, I was getting a couple, like, I got into, like, a little something with this guy, like, last year, and now this year, he called, like, two quick fouls on me, like, I have to go up to him, like, yo, listen, like, we got to squash this beef. <laughs> He's like, listen, <laughs> like, I know, like, I watch the documentaries, I don't know, like, it's so funny, it's like a real thing, it's still a real oh, thing. Yeah. It's not like a thing in the past, because we saw with Tim Donahue. The refs, are a big deal and again i know this is tangent so it's nothing to do with this specific game but i was watching that uh that uh jets bart scott can't wait playoff game versus uh, new england last time we beat them uh thir- you know and we we got a very serious uh unnecessary roughness call uh towards the end of that game and it really helped us on that last drive it gave us new life so dude the refs really affect the games man they really do they really yeah. they really change the outcomes of the game so it's tough to beat the refs i say it every time the jets get screwed it's tough to beat the refs cuz they control the game and sometimes they're with you sometimes they're against you so let's go to my last game in the four o'clocks and my last best bet and greg i absolutely love the pittsburgh steelers dude i Love the Pittsburgh Steelers getting plus four and a half at home. TJ Watt second game back. Minka Fitzpatrick's gonna be back. I, his, uh, I forgot who quote who the quote was from, but somebody from their team said Minka's always grumpy, and I love it. I, <laughs> I, I, I mean, that's what a great quote for like this is this team is ground and pound. They seem to get rid of one of their issues, which is Claypool, who was always complaining and stuff like that. That locker room guy. Warren is good. Najee Harris even getting, you know, his feet, and even though he has knee soreness. I mean, Pittsburgh's getting it together here. Look out for Pittsburgh, man. Especially in a division game here. I see I see Pittsburgh not only covering this game, but winning. I see them winning, beating the Cincinnati Bengals, and starting to get their feet wet into this wild card race. If, if any of these AFC East teams slip, and guess what? They're going to slip because they play each other. Yeah. Buffalo Bills only played, I think, two division games. Uh, I think New England only played two division games. Like they're gonna, it's gonna start getting getting hot here. So, Pittsburgh, they see the light. Tomlin, he's gonna be above five hundred, regardless of what everyone started crying about. And it's gonna start here. He's gonna be four and six. Yeah, I'm with you. I like Pittsburgh in this one too. I think the offense is finding its way a little bit. Matt Canada, Kenny Pickett, those guys there. I think they're kind of figuring out. They they shipped off Claypool. They got some picks for the future used to kind of round out that defense and offense. They need an offensive line. They just don't have it, and that, that kills your team. But the defensive line with T.J. Watt coming back looks much improved. They're getting help in the secondary. So I agree. I think Pittsburgh's a little sneaky here. I think plus four and a half this week. I think next week if they win this game outright, you'll see the spread be closer to even depending on who they're playing because I just think right now a lot of the public and Las Vegas and everything is just factoring in how bad they look to start the season. You know, I think the last couple of weeks they've been okay. So give me Pittsburgh. I'm with you. I like Kenny Pickett too. I think he. I think he's he's thrown some good balls. He looks okay. He's not killing gonna, them. Is it going to be even? It's it's at Indy Monday night. Yeah, I think so. I think Pittsburgh be. might be a favorite. I don't know what it is right now. If there's a look yeah, ahead line, could be a favorite. That's a, they didn't realize Jeff Saturday's going to be on Monday night. Dude, Mike Thomas all losing Jeff Saturday. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. So <laughs> so uh, dude, watch out for Pittsburgh. Watch out. They're coming. I wonder what uh, – introduce, introduce a Sunday night game for uh, for us while I look up uh, Steelers to make the playoffs. Sure. Well, I think we flip-flopped on this one because uh, I know I was a big Charger fan last week. I think maybe we were both Jacksonville fans last week. But Kansas City is going against the L.A. Chargers. Kansas City minus 6.5 on the road on Sunday night. Pat Mahomes in prime time for me is just an easy bet at this point. Minus six and a half. I'm a little worried that Vegas is kind of baiting you into taking them, but 75% of the money is on the Chargers. Chargers, I don't think, looked too good against San Francisco last week in that defense. I don't think Kansas City's defense is as good as San Francisco's defense, but the offense just looks to be going. They got Tony and their Tooney in there adjusting his gloves and scoring touchdowns off. You saw that clip. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, about the last second. Yeah, they got a couple touchdowns to a couple different guys last week. I think Pat Mahomes had four. I mean, uh, maybe it's a thing where I had a big time parlay going, and all I needed was Austin Eckler score a touchdown. And he couldn't do it for the first time. It feels like all season. The Chargers, I think they're just so beat up. I get that they're home, but what home field advantage do they have? We talk about it every game. Six and a half points to me, Kansas City. You're fading the public here on prime time. I think that's a lovely spot to be. I like Kansas City here, my six and a half. Are you ready for this, Greg? I'm ready. What do you think the Pittsburgh Steelers make to make the playoffs is right now? Plus 600. Plus 1460. That's lovely. Just to make the playoffs, not even Just win to their division? make the playoffs. I mean, they're three and six with only seven games left, right? So, Bengals, if they beat the Bengals, they got the Colts, Falcons, Ravens, division game, but it's the Ravens. Yeah, at the Ravens or home against the Ravens? Home. Okay. Panthers, Raiders, Ravens. At the Ravens. At the Ravens. And then home versus the Browns. Plus 1,400? 1460? Plus 1460. That's a bet, baby. That's a bet <laughs> for me. And then I still have to worry about betting the Pittsburghs week in, week out. I got 100 bucks to win 1400 for them just to make the playoffs. I'm set. But I'm also going to bet the week to week. Yeah, that's true, too. If there's money to be made, there's money to be made, John. I think there is money to be made this week with Pittsburgh. Probably next week, too. I've identified them. Plus 1460. That's my, that's my Hail Mary this week. I was going to say your future Hail Mary. <laughs> All right, let's jump to the Sunday night where you took Kansas City. I like them. I love Kansas City, but, dude, the Chargers, they're back against the wall. They're finally – they're as healthy as they're ever going to be. This is it. This is their team. Uh, their defensive backs, whoever's hurt, they're going to be hurt forever. Bosa, is he, is he gonna, he's, he's out for the year, right? Yeah, I think he's out, yeah. They're, they're never they're, – as healthy as they're ever going to be, I think they're... Uh, not necessarily. I mean, Mike Williams may or may not play. He's back, no? No, I th- I saw that uh, he's limited this week, and they're going to see. He's going to be a game-time decision, I think. Mm. Uh, for some for some crazy reason, it feels like the Chargers could actually win this game. You know, like Kansas City slips yeah. one w- couple times a year, right? It's a division game. Uh, it, Again, it's another prime time. Are you impressed by the Chiefs, man? Listen, yes. like, like you're watching the Chiefs week in, week out. You think they're a Super Bowl winning team? I think so. I, they're not like, I mean, there was a season or two ago where they were like, where Pat Mahomes was scoring like 28 points in a quarter and stuff like that. They're not that good because they don't have Tyreek Hill anymore, obviously. I think their defense is a little lackluster compared to teams, uh, teams in the past that they've had. But... Dude, I think they're I think they're young defensive players are coming along. I I listen. I was watching Red uh, Red Zone and stuff last week. They were shouting out our boy Leo Chenault on there. They were shouting out um, whoever the Purdue curl office or whatever on there. So, you know, they're not killing teams. Like again, they won twenty to seventeen against the Titans two weeks ago. They won twenty seven seventeen last week, covered by a half a point against the Jaguars. Kansas City just goes on these spurts in the middle of the season where they just win games and like that happened last year like I had the I had the alternate under 10 and a half last year and they just went on this run in the middle of the season where they just barely win a bunch of games but they win a bunch of games and then they really turn on the playoffs so yeah I like their I like their the rest of their schedule looks really nice I was just looking at it I mean they got the Chargers this week but then they have the Rams Bengals Broncos Texans Seahawks, Broncos, Raiders. Like you play the Broncos twice, you play the Raiders again. The Bengals are beat up. The Rams are decimated. Like you're looking at a pretty nice walk into the playoffs here. Probably gonna win the division unless the Chargers beat you this week. They already also played in prime time earlier this year where the Chargers did win. So I think it's tough to beat a team twice. I, oh, know. the Chargers beat the Chiefs. I didn't realize that. Yeah, remember it was that Thursday night game. I think Justin Herbert got oh, hurt yeah. in that game. Um, but they, Thursday. but Justin Herbert led wow. a great Thursday and the Monday, uh, Thursday and the Sunday night when they got flexed into this too. Yeah. They love, they love Pat Mahomes in prime time, which rightfully so he's probably the face of the league, but Justin Herbert is too, like this two big time quarterbacks. So yeah, yeah I dude. think six and a half is too much. Yeah. I like uh, Kansas city. I think, yeah, I, take, I, I, I think Georgia's. I don't know what their odds are to win the super bowl, but I'm not impressed with the bills. Like you said, the Eagles might be fraudulent. So. Okay. 
I think Kansas City is fraudulent as well. So there's that. Uh, I, I to be honest with you, a little side tangent. I think if we're talking AFC, I think the Ravens are the best team in the AFC when it's gonna when it's all push comes to shove in the playoffs. I don't want to play them. I don't want to play. And then number two would probably be Kansas City and Kansas City if they have the bye. I don't want to you know want to play them in Kansas City. Tough game, but I'm not. They're not unbeatable. The Bills are obviously not unbeatable. Nobody's unbeatable in the AFC. To be honest with you, I would be scared to play the Dolphins because they could just like break out. They could like break out. You know, I, as a Jets fan, I'm not worried about because we'll, I'm yeah, way more sure. confident in our secondary. Sure, yeah, but I'm saying in general, like just in, in the class of the AFC. Oh like, yeah, I, I'm scared yes. to play the Ravens number one, and then Chiefs in in Kansas City. But the Chiefs are on the road, no problem for me. Like I, I will, I'll play. You know, I'm not terrified. And I'm I'm terrified of the Dolphins a little bit in the playoffs. It's like they could they could just break one on you. You know what I mean? Like you could be doing good for so long, and then all of a sudden, boom. Tyreek Hill breaks one, Wild breaks one, and it's like, come on, dude. Or Jeff Wilson now, or Gazeki. Like, this is annoying. You know, the defense stinks, but like, I don't know. Uh, that, that, that's what just kind of scares yeah, me. Yeah, I think the Buffalo Bills are up there, too. Because, again, for us, I'm not too worried about it. It was Sauce and DJ Reed. But if your other teams like Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis have to scare you with Knox, too, Knox is pretty good. Yeah. So. All right. So let's get into this Monday night game in Mexico City. Kyler Murray, I mean, there's the there's the altitude problem there, which I think is actually a, a huge issue for Kyler Murray with a hamstring. Is it Kyler Murray? Well, the, I, listen, I, he if he plays, this is this is my game of the month. If he plays, San Francisco is the bet of the year. Just okay. just take it like because that. because he's in ten thousand uh, feet of altitude and he has a messed up hamstring and all he does is run. Like it, it, it's just a recipe for disaster for me. And honestly, you're playing against what I think is the Super Bowl winner of this year. That's the San Francisco 49ers. Every week I'm going to say it, and their record just keeps getting week week to week. John, how can you call you know uh, you know this team a four and four team? How can you say they're going to go to the Super Bowl? John, how can you say a five and four team is going to go to the Super Bowl? We're going to play we're going to play this game every single week until all of a sudden San Francisco is winning the division, hosting playoff games. It's going to be great. I love San Francisco here. The points are a lot. But is it a lot? It's the best team in the league versus either an injured quarterback or a backup quarterback. And Arizona just stinks in general. San Francisco, they're going to absolutely murder Arizona. Yeah, I'm in the same boat with you. I think San Francisco, too, they won last week, but they didn't cover. I don't think they had their best game. Um, And Arizona, I think, just had a big-time win against a really beat-up Rams team. So I think it's a letdown spot for them. I don't I don't trust Arizona. I don't like Arizona. I do like San Francisco. I mean, just the weapons that they have now that they have Christian McCaffrey. I mean, it's just insane. Defense worries me a little bit because they did lose that uh, DB there um, on injured reserve. I'm blanking on his name right now. Um, Arizona? And he's been pretty good. Now, San Francisco, Verrett, Jason Verrett. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's been pretty good for them, so... You know, like I said a couple weeks ago, they're only going to keep getting healthier. Armstead and Buka there on the defensive ends. They might be coming back this week. They're questionable right now. We'll see later in the week what their status is going to be. So, dude, if you can get a couple DNs back to go with Bosa and who they already have at the linebacker and DN position, just chasing down um, Kyler Murray all over the field in Mexico City. To your point, the altitude, he's already injured a little bit, so he might not be running 100%. I think that's a recipe for success. I think defensive players running down Colt McCoy is a recipe for success. Um, He's not very elusive. So, yeah, I like San Francisco for sure. Seven and a half worries me a little bit. The money, though, right now is kind of split 60-40 on the 49ers. So um, I was expecting it to be a little bit more heavy, you know, sided on the San Francisco side, but... Seeing that's kind of even makes me makes me like it. So yeah, give me San Francisco my seven and a half. All right, that about does it for the full slate. You know how I I I, I literally cannot believe that Pittsburgh is plus fourteen sixty to make the playoffs. Yeah, I'll be and taking that as soon as we sign off tonight. Do you know what Cincinnati is? Let's do this. Pittsburgh fourteen sixty. What is Cincinnati to make the playoffs? Cincinnati is. Five and four, and Pittsburgh is three and six. Six hundred. What? Plus or minus? Plus six hundred. It's minus one thirty. That's crazy. What's happening? 
Yeah, what am I there's missing? still there's still seven games left, <laughs> seven weeks left. Like so much can happen. Cooper Cup broke his foot or ankle or whatever it was last week. Like you could lose someone. Yeah, Jamar Chase is out. I, Mixon's not gonna score five touchdowns against the real teams. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. I, anyway. All right, so a uh, little, uh, little bonus before we get into our Hail Mary parlays and our teasers. Greg, go. What do you got? For my Hail Mary? Mm-hmm. Hail Mary parlay. I'm going to do the same bet as my teaser, too, because, again, I'm just rocking with it. I don't know how it's going to go, but I love the New York teams this week. So for my Hail Mary parlay, give me the Bills minus 8.5, the under 42.5, the Jets plus 3.5, the under 38.5, and the Giants minus three and a half, the under forty six and a half. That six leg parlay pays out thirty seven hundred on FanDuel right now, plus thirty seven hundred. All right, so you know about my crazy parlay that I took today. Uh, it involves a lot more college football than it does NFL football, so I won't include it here. But I have a nice. Nice 23-leg parlay. One of them already hit. The Pelicans are in there. They just won today. So let's we're go. ready to go here. We're on the move here. But just let's stick with the football. Man. There's just some games, Greg, that are just so damn easy that like, I don't know what to do with it. So for me, I, I guess you could call it Hail Mary. But it's the Browns money line. The Giants money line, the Vikings money line, which doesn't make sense to me, the Steelers money line, and of course, the New York Jets money line, sprinkling the Washington Commanders money line. We're talking about $100 to win 14.8. So that's what I'm throwing in right now. That's my Hail Mary. Trying to win 15 grand. Let's do it. I love it. My teaser this week, again, I like the unders and all the New York games. And then uh, the other three legs I'm putting in there, it's going to be six-leg parlay. I like the Saints at plus two. This is a six-point teaser. Saints at plus two, the Commanders at plus two and a half, and the Eagles at minus a half a point. And then again, the unders are going to be the Bills under four tees down, under 48 and a half. The, jo- the Jets under 44 and a half, and the Giants under 52 and a half. Six point teaser, six leg teaser, plus 500 on FanDuel. All right, so I took a teaser uh, already a little bit early, so the lines might be off, I guess, slightly. Um, man, it's, it's kind of a Hail Mary teaser. Yep. Yeah. But that's usually that's usually where we're at here. Okay, so let's go. It's plus six. It's thirteen. It's plus five thousand. It's Green Bay plus four and a half. Chicago plus ten. Giants plus two. Texans plus eight and a half. Jets plus ten and a half. Colts plus sixteen. Browns plus twelve. Ravens minus seven. Great number. Broncos plus three and a hook. Steelers plus 11 and a half. Cowboys plus three and a hook. Chargers 11 and a hook. 49ers half at every single game. Hey, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to take every game in a, in a small teaser like that yeah. so I can have it so I'm not tempted to actually take it if I don't like it. You know what I mean? So now I have something to root for in the Denver Raiders game even though I don't want to be anywhere near that game. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's why I... Yeah, just one of those things. What if you're season. right? What if you get every single pick right? That's what my tw- that's what my real parlay is. What if I'm right parlay? Yeah. And then we, could, we can retire. That'd be lovely. <laughs> But yeah, that's about it for today. You want to go through uh, the full slate real quick? Yeah, again, Jay Malika on Twitter, Winning P Weekly on Twitter. You guys can find us on there. We're also on YouTube on the Knicks, Jets, etc. YouTube channel. We have our own playlist there, so you can come, enjoy the games, enjoy the analysis we do for the NFL. And then also Chip Murphy 7 and I, John jumps on when he can. We do all the college games as well. So it's been good. John's been red hot in college. It's been pretty good in the NFL the last two weeks. I've been down, so you can fade me 
Or maybe I bounce back and you lose all your money. We'll see this week when all these games mm-hmm. get played. That's hilarious because, hell, I've been doing unbelievably well in college. And this is a week of reckoning for me. I could be a, a, a huge thousand or, or or a poor man. We'll see what happens after this weekend. Greg, Thursday night, Tennessee at Green Bay in the whiteout in Lambeau. What do you got? Tennessee three plus three and a half. All right, one o'clock slate. We are. Oof, we have a lot of the same teams, man. Chicago Bears plus three and a half at Atlanta. What do you got? Atlanta minus three and a half. Same. Cleveland plus eight and a half at Buffalo. What do you got? Buffalo minus eight and a half. My first best bet of the day. I love Cleveland here. I love the under two. Bang it before the snow comes in. Philadelphia minus six and a half at Indy. I like got? Philly minus six and a half. Same. We are the same in a lot of these games. It's not looking good. Jets plus three and a half at New England. What do you got? I like the Jets plus three and a half as my second best bet of the day. Double best bet. Let's go. Let's ride. Oh, wait, Jets Nation. Let's fly. Let's fly. Los Angeles Rams plus three and a half. Perfected game of the day. Shout out Bill Simmons at New Orleans minus three and a half. What do you got? Is my what am I missing pick of the day? New Orleans minus three and a half. I do not get why the spread is so low. Same, dude. We're going to do so bad this week. Detroit, plus three and a half at the Giants. What do you got? I love the Giants. My third and final best bet of the day. All New York best bets this week. Giants minus three and a half. I love the Giants. This is going to be so bad. Carolina plus 12 and a half. said that last week and it was absolutely terrible, John. I think one of these weeks we're on the same page and we get it right. This could be the week. Well, last week we, we we were on opposite a lot. So we said one of us is going to do really bad. One of us is going to do no, really good. No, we were all on the same page of the 1 o'clock slate. We said the 1 oh, o'clock slate right. was going to suck. And then we were opposite on the 4 o'clock slate. You won all of them, and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you got to 7-7. Seven and seven. That's how I had a terrible week. It's because you had a great 4 o'clock window. So, again, if you're watching and we have all the 1 o'clock games and we're losing, one of us is going to be right in the 4 o'clock <laughs> slate. You're going to have to determine who it is. I've yet to do... Good in both slates. It's impossible to do. Carolina plus twelve and a half at Baltimore. What do you got? Hold your nose and take Carolina plus twelve and a half. <laughs> like that. Washington minus three and a half at Houston. Best bet of mine. Washington football team. What do you got? I like Washington minus three and a half. Let's go. <laughs> Las Vegas. This this game's just funny to me. Four o'clock. Las Vegas Raiders at Denver. What do you got? I like the Raiders plus two and a half. I right, got Denver. Wow. Well, it. Okay, no. Let's say we're almost opposite everything in the 4 o'clock again. So yeah. It's just repeating itself. Dallas, minus one and a half at Minnesota. What do you got? I like Dallas. I got Minnesota. This is the only thing we're... Uh, not the only thing, but the only thing in the 4 o'clock we differ on. Then Cincinnati, minus four and a half at Pittsburgh. What do you got? Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, plus 1460 to make the damn wild card. Let's go. Let's go. Sunday night, Kansas City. LA Chargers, six and a half. What do you got? I like KC minus six and a half. This is my hold my nose. Take LA Chargers, by the way. Best bet Pittsburgh Steelers, four and a half. Monday night, San Francisco, Mexico versus Arizona. What do you got, Greg? San Fran minus seven and a half. Yeah, I hate Arizona. Let's go. Week 11 in the books. Let's get it. Nick's coming, Jets coming, ETC on YouTube. Hit us up on our Twitter, Winning P Weekly. We out. Yeah, we're available everywhere podcasts are. So take a listen, take us on the road, and always comment. Let us know what you're taking. Let us know who you like because we would like to tail and talk about the games. Done. Let's go Jets. That's fine.